Hey, good morning, guys. I want to walk you through uh, my condensing unit at my house. Uh, I'm going to put the gauges on. We're going to talk about um, refrigerant recovery today and rec refrigerant evacuation using a vacuum pump. I want to hook everything up, show you how all that works, how everything connects, and give you a little better understanding versus just something on paper. So let me open this thing up and get everything hooked up and walk you through that. All right, so I pull out my service gauges and I'm, I'm looking and I'm seeing that they're just not quite calibrated. So I want to show you real quick how to calibrate. Um, got my little control screwdriver. Uh, you can get these at uh, vendors, wherever. Um, take these little plugs out. Right on the face of the gauges. These little plugs just come out. Take the tip of your uh, straight slot, put it through that, that hole. Go to that little brass adjustment and you can see it'll, you can move your needle around a five or ten, a couple, couple pounds difference. So I'll get that one centered up to zero, put that plug back in so I don't get dirt and moisture in. I'll work on my discharge side, line that up, get that right in the middle of the zero, kind of where I like it that plug back in and gauges are calibrated okay so I'm gonna put my refrigerant gauges on suction discharge gotta make sure all my initial hose fittings are on tight they're all everything is closed take my suction side hose these are actually low loss Refrigerant gauges, uh, when you see these larger uh, type uh, fittings at the end of your hoses, uh, you'll know that they are uh, low loss. So it's uh, like a little check valve in here. So when I pull this off, the uh, refrigerant stays in the hose and doesn't come out. So it doesn't freeze my hands off. Find my suction side. Keep my cap handy to put back on. Low side hose on. about 125 pounds in my uh, low side with the unit not running. Take off my high side hose. Cap off my uh, liquid line. High side hose on. I'm reading high side and low side. Start the unit up, low side will go down, high side will go up of course. Okay. Okay, so looking at my gauges, uh, I do not have uh, 407C as one of my options here. I got four, uh, R22, 410A, and 404. Uh, this being a 407C unit, I have to look it up in my PT chart to uh, find out what that all means. But the initial things I can easily do is, uh, of course, just what's my suction feel like? This feels really cold, my classic beer can cold, so I know that's okay. My liquid line, feels uh, kind of just ambient room temperature, so nothing crazy there. So just that tells me my system seems to be running just fine. Check my air temperature coming out. It's uh, maybe just barely warm, but it's only a 70 degree day, so I wouldn't expect it to be uh, hot uh, on a day like this. Coil is uh, clean. This is a uh, micro uh, channel coil. Everything looks good on that. Uh, just initial appearances on this unit that it uh, seems to be charged correctly and operating correctly um, so all good for now okay so here's the process for recovering refrigerant from an air conditioning unit if I wanted to do any work on this particular unit uh, replace a compressor repair a leak uh, replace the entire unit what I need to do first is take the refrigerant out of the system that's the refrigerant in the condenser refrigerant that's in the refrigerant lines, uh, my evaporator coil inside, all the refrigerant needs to come out. With that, I'm going to use my recovery machine to do that work and a recovery tank. This recovery tank is uh, in a slight vacuum, meaning there's no refrigerant, no air. It's uh, completely clean and clear, ready for a refrigerant. So 
proper connections. I'm going to take my uh, charging and evacuation hose off. I need my suction line and discharge line connected to my unit. That's my connection so that I can pull refrigerant out of the system. I'm going to put my center yellow hose onto my recovery tank. Make sure my recovery, both my valves are open. I'm going to take the extra hose that I have that I use just for charging and recovery. Put it on the outlet side of my recovery tank. Recovery unit. Hook that hose to my recovery tank on the vapor side. So if I have late liquid or vapor, either one's going to go in and uh, fill up my tank. Valve open, valve open. Now I'm going to open up my suction side. Open up my discharge side. Open up the valve going to my recovery and charging hose. Open it all the way up. I now have refrigerant passing through my recovery machine into my recovery tank. I'm going to purge out any little bit of air because I only have pure refrigerant. My next step is to open the tank, open the valve on my tank, let the system pressures equalize. When they equalize, I turn my vacuum pump on. And at that point, I'm pulling all the remaining refrigerant out into my recovery tank. When my gauge pressures get down to zero, I know that I've pulled all the refrigerant out. I'm ready to take everything off and do the work I need to do on my unit. Or if I'm replacing the unit, replace it out. Put that refrigerant back in if I need to. Okay, now we've got all the refrigerant out of the system. Gauges are both reading zero. It tells me that I have no refrigerant or very little refrigerant, maybe some vapor left in the system, in my hoses, etc. The process now is to, uh, assuming I'm, I'm done with the work, that I'm done with the unit, uh, replace the compressor, fix the refrigerant leak, replace the whole condenser, what have you. Whatever I've done, I want to now put my system into a deep vacuum so I'm able to remove any contaminants, any moisture, uh, any little bits of refrigerant left in there, maybe some nitrogen while I was doing some pressure checking. Get it all out of the system, get it nice and clean and dry and ready for my refrigerant to go back in, start the unit up and I'm done. So, need to put the system in a deep vacuum. First, I want to make sure my vacuum pump's working, my gauges are holding pressure and I'm not losing any pressure from those. So my first step is to connect my evacuation hose to my vacuum pump. This particular vacuum pump has several different size openings for different size hoses. Uh, as you've read, the larger the hose, the faster this process is going to work and the better it's going to work for you. Large hose on, gauges are still closed, everything is shut. Um, I would open up my one gauge for my vacuum so that now when my vacuum pump starts, I'm evacuating my piping, my gauge set, my hoses, everything is, or I'm sorry, uh, just up to my uh, manifold gauges and my incoming hose, just to make sure that all of that is correct. I could take my hoses off the unit, put it all in a deep vacuum, make sure everything holds. If it does, when it does, then I can open up my gauge set, uh, which opens my vacuum pump up into the refrigerant piping, condensing unit, my evaporator, pull it all into a deep vacuum. Uh, once my micron gauge is down to about 500 and it holds under 1,000 with everything off, I'm ready to recharge my system at that point. Okay, now that my evacuation process is completed, I've pulled the system down into uh, 500 microns, uh, shut all the gauges off, watched my micron gauge, it didn't go past 1,000 microns telling me I have no leaks, I've got a good solid vacuum. At that point, I would take off my charging hose. I now connect my charging, charging hose either to back to my recovery tank, I pull the liquid out to recharge back into my system, or I could put in virgin refrigerant into the system, just depending on what I do. Uh, if I have any thought that the refrigerant I pulled out is possibly contaminated, I wouldn't want to put it back into my system. I'd want to go with virgin refrigerant. Uh, 
Uh, I feel that there's maybe was moisture or non-contaminants in my refrigerant, uh, by all means, I would just want to go with brand new refrigerant in the system. Hook it up to either one, purge out my line to make sure I don't put that much air back in my system and, and moisture, uh, purge it out, uh, charge the system up per the manufacturer specifications, start and test, superheat subcooling, make sure everything looks right, you're good to go. Put all your tools back away, make sure you clean up your equipment as you put it back in your truck, uh, clean up the job site, put the unit back together, check out with the customer, and you're all done.